Hey guys, it's Raul again, and today I'll be bringing you my December wrap-up. In the month of December, I ended up completing four books and DNFing one, which I'm going to go ahead and share with you all today. Now, the first book I ended up completing in the month of December was A World Without You by Beth Revis. This is a YA contemporary about a boy named Bo who believes he has special powers and can time travel, and in this whole time traveling thing, ends up leaving his girlfriend behind. So, he believes he has left his girlfriend behind in the past, but he's being told by everybody else around him that his girlfriend actually is dead so it's his journey kind of trying to figure out where his girlfriend is how he can get her back while everybody else is kind of trying to stray him away from that kind of thought process this is definitely a book that deals with a lot of mental health issues and everything our main character Bo is dealing with a couple of things you don't really know at the beginning and slowly things kind of start to fall into place and be revealed and everything I really, really enjoyed this book. I've never read anything by Beth Revis before, and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars, but I really, really enjoyed Bo as a character and everything. I enjoyed the story and kind of everything that was going on with him as you're trying to figure out if he's actually imagining all of these things in his head or if these things are actually true, if he actually can really travel through time. One of the characters in here is supposed to be Hispanic or Latin American, and the representation just was a little bit off for me. Like, if you're going to inclu include a Hispanic or Latin American character kind of add some traits in there that's going to make them feel like they're Hispanic like the character didn't feel Hispanic at all so I don't know why you know it was mentioned maybe if it was never mentioned at all that this character was Hispanic I probably would have been okay with it but just the fact that the character was mentioned as being Hispanic and then nothing really showed me that this character was actually Hispanic was just a little like it threw me off a little bit, and I didn't really like the representation that much in there. But other than that, it was a great story. It was very heartfelt. I really, really, like I said, enjoyed Bo and his journey and everything, kind of figuring out what happened with his girlfriend and what the truth behind everything is. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. The second book I ended up completing in the month of December was Never Have I Ever by Sarah Shepard. This is the second book in the Lion Game series. And for those of you who don't know, the Lion Game is a series about these two girls. One of them dies right at the beginning. So one of them is dead and you're kind of like listening to her perspective as she's dead and watching everything going on and then her long lost twin sister that she ends up finding and the long lost twin sister kind of takes her place is kind of put in the situation where she's told that she can't tell anybody that she's a long lost sister so the sister that's actually still alive is pretending to be the sister that is now dead and is trying to figure out who the killer is and everything it's a really really enjoyable series it's the same author who wrote the pretty little liar series and everything so it kind of has that feel of Pretty Little Liars, which I really, really enjoyed because I love that mystery and everything. And the second book definitely continued on really well with this mystery. I really enjoyed where the characters went and everything, even though I kind of felt at some points that they felt a little immature and there was some kind of drama in there that was just like, eh, that I didn't really enjoy that much. But then toward the end, kind of that drama and that thing is kind of explained, which is nice. It wasn't because the characters were doing this on purpose. They had kind of a meaning and a purpose for all of this kind of drama that they were ensuing and everything which I really enjoyed and it left off on a cliffhanger which I really enjoyed because I actually really like cliffhangers so yes I ended up giving this another four out of five stars I'm really really enjoying this series and cannot wait to continue on I'm currently reading the third book and I'm really enjoying it so far I'm really really loving this mystery and loving Sarah Shepard's writing and how engaging everything is and how hooked you are to like this mystery and all the characters and trying to figure out who did what and everything so it's definitely very very enjoyable so far. Now the third book I ended up completing in the month of December was The Call by Patero Gillian. This is a YA horror book. It definitely fits into horror more than like the mystery thriller aspect about this dystopian world where there is something called The Call where everybody kind of like at some point randomly gets called by these like creatures that are inhabiting the world and have like tried to take over the world but they're being kept like separately from humanity and they get called to the place of these different creatures and they I think have three minutes to survive within this world but a lot of the people don't end up surviving at all so kids in our real world are kind of being trained in these schools to kind of know what to do when they get called to try and survive it because they want to learn as much as they can from these creatures that are calling the humans to their world and everything to try and stop these creatures from you know continuing off to kill humanity and everything 
I really, really enjoyed this one. This is definitely a book that I went into not really knowing much about it, and I absolutely loved, loved, loved it. I ended up giving it a 4.5 stars or so. I loved the gruesomeness and kind of the darkness around it. I wasn't expecting it to be so gruesome. Like, there were some parts that were just so descriptive and so disturbing, and yeah, I really ended up enjoying this one in the end. I was a little thrown off by the ending. Like, it doesn't really conclude... It was just weird the way that it ended, kind of, but then I heard it's supposed to be part of a series, but then I like went on Goodreads and it didn't say it was book one of anything, or it didn't say it was really part of a series. So I'm just confused if you guys know if this is supposed to actually be a part of a series, let me know down below, because that would be great. Like That would make more sense if this was actually the first book in a series rather than a standalone, because there was kind of like no conclusion at the end. Like stuff kind of happened, which was great. Like the ending really picked up and got really exciting, but then it kind of just like left off, like not even on a cliffhanger. Like it just kind of like everything just kind of stopped and there was really no conclusion to it. But either, either way, I really, really ended up enjoying this one. So if you guys love kind of darker, grittier YA, this is definitely one to check out. The last book I ended up completing in the month of December, I actually ended up completing on January 2nd, but most of this book I ended up reading in December anyway, so that's why I'm throwing it in this wrap-up. But that is written and read by Anne Bishop. This is the first book in the Others series. This is an adult urban fantasy about this woman named Meg Corbin, who is a blood prophet. So every time she cuts herself and bleeds, she has prophecies of things that are to come and everything. So she's obviously a hot commodity um, because everybody kind of wants her for her skin because she can tell the future and everything. So she's being held captive at the beginning by these humans and she quickly escapes and seeks refuge within the others. Now the others are composed of a lot of different creatures like shapeshifters and vampires and elementals and it was just absolutely amazing. I love these characters. I love this world. It's definitely a slower book. So if you guys are turned off by like slower reads, I would go into this one cautiously. I know a lot of people aren't going to like it because of the slower pacing because it is really, really slow. But I really, really enjoyed that slowness of it. I loved the world building. I loved the character development. I loved where things were going and kind of the... the somewhat mystery around it and everything and the action scenes for the end I really really enjoyed. I ended up giving this a 5 out of 5 stars because I thought this was a really great solid first book to a series. I'm super super excited to continue on with the series because I do own the second and third books in the series so I will hopefully be getting to them fairly soon. I absolutely loved this book and this series. It really kept me engaged even in the slower parts. I, I, I never felt bored reading this book, which is surprising to me for a book this slow that I was never bored. I was always intrigued about all of the different characters and everything. Like, it switches between multiple points of views, which I really, really end up liking. So, yes, this is definitely a solid book if you guys are interested at all in adult urban fantasy. This is definitely a series to check out. Now, the last book that I ended up getting very far into but ended up DNFing is one that I mentioned already in one of my previous videos of my most disappointing reads, and that was The Chemist by Stephanie Meyer. Now, this book started off amazing. I want to see the first seven or eight chapters or so were absolute gold. I absolutely loved kind of the new character that was established, the story that was being established and everything. And then kind of, you know, romance was incorporated and I just really wasn't liking kind of the instantly feel that it had. I really wasn't enjoying kind of how our characters changed after this romance was incorporated and it just got really, really annoying for me and I just could not keep reading it. Like, these characters were just annoying me so much that I just didn't even, like, I just lost interest in the story itself because of these characters. And it's so sad because it started off so, so strong that I was expecting to love this book when I first started reading it, but just, like, things shift and things started to change that I really wasn't enjoying and I could not keep going with this one. This is one that I definitely want to try and finish maybe later on if I can get it on audiobook or something and just listen to the ending of it that would probably be what ends up making me finish this book but as of right now I cannot continue to read this one it definitely got me really slumpy which is why I didn't read as much in December because this made me super slumpy I was not engaged I kind of lost interest after a while so yeah about 377 pages or so as you can see I was almost at the end 
but I just could not do it, and I felt so bad because I wanted to love it so much because I actually am a fan of Stephanie Meyer. I really did enjoy the Twilight series and the host and everything, but then this book kind of made me want to reread Twilight to see if I'm just as annoyed with Edward and Bella as I was with these two main characters and I was reading their points of views because, yeah, maybe it's just my tastes have changed. Who knows? So, yeah, guys, that is it for all of the books that I read in the month of December. Comment down below. Let me know if you guys have read any of these books and what your thoughts were and everything. Thank you all again for watching, and I will see you all next time.